and here we go. Okay, so welcome everybody to our first Zoom meeting. I know that things are not really going well with COVID and impending doom of Western civilization, but we're gonna get through this because we are family. Here. Hello. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Hello. What's up? <sighs> Hello. Hey. <laughs> oh, hi. Uh, hey, why are you? Fly infestation. I have to leave. Okay, so are you guys ready to get started on postmodernism? I'm ready. <gasps> sure we are. Oh, sure we How do are. I turn the camera? How old is little Roscoe? <gasps> One week old. Good to start off today, wholesome. Let's get started. His name is Slippy. In our previous lesson at school, we talked about the philosophy of Renaissance and Immanuel Kant age. As you all remember, it branched off from medieval Europe's religious philosophy and used the reason to create their own. They believed that the world followed a logical order and that we can only find truth from well-supported I rescued him from Some a shelter. Some said the uh, order was a reflection of God's plan on humans' minds. Others said that we couldn't find the true order because the outside world altered how our minds worked. Soon, Immanuel Kant connected these two ideologies together with compartment mind, as well as establishing a strict moral system. And all was good for Western philosophy. That is until World War O. Excuse me, I have a question. I have a bigger question! What year did the Renaissance end? Go on! Can you describe the difference between postmodernism and modernism? I know both are challenging the status quo, but one seems more advanced. Uh, well, modernism came after World War I and postmodernism came after World War II. Come on, you could see it from the post. I know they are different time periods, but I don't know how they differ in all... Poyos! 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 <laughs> Sorry, teacher, that's my brother and he's out of control. <laughs> Um, um, are you seeing my thumbs up? What's the end conflict of World War One? I'm sure they'll be okay. Me too. They just got infected by the corona capsules for your by American government. Shut up! Go on, Ojan. Uh, right. So, after the World War One and the tragedies it brought, the philosophy world was disillusioned. There wasn't logic, there weren't constant ethical laws, there wasn't God to prevent the war, there was a noble goal to strike towards, and there wasn't any noble logical purpose humanity existed for. Surely it wasn't slaughter each other and make yeah, countless like hop, widows. Hop, hop. In post-war Europe, nations crumbled, extreme poverty prevailed, and all the cheer of winning the war was gone. Nobody wanted to or couldn't return back to the ideals of the past because all that they did was to lead them to doom. There were many things going on. Absurdism was pe becoming prevalent, atheism got more popular, and nihilism was the most popular philosophy. And that's where Star Trek. Hmm. Go on. Guys, please let's not leave track. We need to finish this by. How you screen share is the green button on the screen share. How do you leave this screen? Uh, press share. the white rectangle. So, where were we again? Sartre. Sartre. Yes, thank you, Sartre. So, Jean Paul Sartre is the most prominent figure in modernist philosophy. Before him, the nihilist philosophy was present, which dictated that all the divine ideas and ethical laws were all made up and life itself was meaningless, leaving its followers to reject everything. Sartre whoa, whoa, also thought this, whoa, whoa, whoa. and rather than finding an alternative to life to philosophers before him, he found a compromise between Nietzsche and... Demoba! 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 Uh, Demoba! Demoba! Uh, well, that's how it got to detention. <laughs> Don't wanna be him. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know eating is forbidden, right? Couldn't he do the workload? 
Oh, um, I'm sorry. Go on. Be well soon. Oh, John, did you get my private message? Huh? Did you get the message I sent in private? No, send me again. As I was saying, he won the compromise between nothingness and meaning. Before I delve into that, I want to describe the man. He was short, white, and looked like Socrates. Ugly. He lived most of his life in Paris, but he had exotropia in his eyes. He would spend most of his time on two white, the two wise men cafe writing notes. Yeah. As for his ideas, they were revolutionary for the time. He acknowledged that there isn't a divine and eternal meaning that drove humans forward. Yet, he also acknowledged that meaning existed, not in a general way, but a personal way. According to him, each individual determined the meaning of their lives and universe throughout the actions they choose to do and beliefs they choose to believe. He thought that all individuals had the burden of free choice and were their own guides for a fully realized life. These ideas affected many of his students as scholars of his time including Albert Camus. Now, can anyone tell me how his relationship was with Albert? Albert Camus and Jean-Paul Sartre met in June 1943 at the opening of his play, The Flight. While Sartre focused on academia, Camus produced literature works like The Stranger and The Plague. Although they both slept with Simone Beauvoir, a prominent feminist of the time, they had a really good relationship until they had differing ideologies created by the Cold War. Yes, that's right. Hojim, did you like my answer? Yes, that was really good. So you really loved it, right? Um, yes. So you are proud of me. What? Because my mom says that I am the most disgraceful thing she has ever done. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm proud of you. Really? Are you? Are you? <laughs> uh, so right now, I'll send you guys to breakout rooms to discuss Sartre's views. And um, as I was saying, you need to... Um, Hojam, I have a question. Yes. I think, I think there's something wrong with the sound file you sent. I uh, didn't send a sound file. Can we please move on? But the address is yours. Would you like to check? Okay, but just for a sec. We need to get into discussions now. Um, also, uh, there's something wrong with my sound system. So, can you please lean over? Okay, so what's it about? <laughs> What's it about is that you just got pranked on Pram Master 64 Screen Ball? And I'm here to let you guys know on my new YouTube Red Show, Hashtag Supreme Boy. <laughs> it's going live in September 11th at 6.40 a.m. Pacific time. Be sure to check that and subscribe to my YouTube, follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, send me on Snapchat, see me on LinkedIn, and follow me on MySpace. What in the world was that? Uh, I have to go. Uh, We're gonna be together forever. No! You, you son of a fucking dang it, bitch! I'm shit! I'm gonna fuck you up! Everybody, this is silent. This is it. I can't get through postmodernism. The <laughs> curriculum won't be finished. This is my third strike, and now I'll be out. Out! <laughs> you know how hard it is to find a job with a full software degree these days? I'm not even talking about the crisis. I've had to sleep in a public bedroom to get there. 
public bathroom. And I can't go back. I just can't. <laughs> Why didn't I listen? Why did I choose marketing instead of stupid half-ass degree? I mean, I didn't become the next Karl Marx or spirit of revolution or be influential. I mean, I, just stupid lucky in a stupid school with all of this degenerates. Is this my life? Is this what my life is? Is this what I'll have to do for the rest of my life? With just minimum salary? Oh God, what have I done? What have I done? Jean Paul Sartre says that we create our own reality. What's my reality, huh? What's my reality? A bunch of fucking bullshit. Is this your meeting? Is this who you are? Do you want to finally have some control while keeping your data safe from Russia? Guancha can give you the smooth and controlled conversations you desire by using the powerful service given by our generous donors from China. With only 69.69 yuan per month. Guancha. Serving the people.